line. Brought to you by Sunbeam, the best electric appliances made. Makers of the famous Sunbeam Mixmaster Mixer and Sunbeam Deluxe Electric Tools, a full line of quality electric tools for your Christmas giving. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. <laughs> and now a gentleman who has kept me awake the last three nights in the nicest possible way. He has written a monumental literary achievement, a book called Hawaii. And I recommend it wholeheartedly, Mr. James Michener. And I should like to introduce that wise, witty, and wonderful writer, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And I am very proud tonight to be sitting between a brilliant author and his very, very pleased and delighted publisher, Mr. Bennett Cerf. You know, it's rather refreshing to have a publisher and his author on the same side for once, against a common enemy. Not, <laughs> not a very usual not thing, really. is it, Jeff? No, Maybe sir. it's an uncommon enemy, and here he is, John Charles Day. I don't mind being called an enemy, but I don't think you had to describe me as common at the same time. Huh? Change it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. We have some very interesting people and some interesting occupations tonight, as witness the fact that the panel will now utter one joyous whoop when I tell them to be ready to put their blindfolds on immediately. We will also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first contestant after this. All right, panel, are the blindfolds all in place? Uh -huh. Yeah, we do. Yes. In that event, uh, will our first challenger come in and sign in, please? Uh, do you know how we keep score on this program? If you know how we keep score, there's... One little chore to be done, that is to let the audience here in the theater and the folks who are at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, as does not need to be said, really, you know there is an area of identification which has required us to ask you to put your blindfolds on. It can cover almost... Uh, any area that would be helpful to you in terms of what you could see if you didn't have the blindfolds on. We do want to be helpful, and so uh, we'll start the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Would we recognize you from a story or a picture that may have been in the newspapers in the last week? Perhaps. Uh, would it be on pages other than the entertainment page of the newspapers? Perhaps. Perhaps, that's dubious. No, we'll, we'll give you a yes on that one. Yes? With your permission, yes. Sir. Um, have you been associated with anything that is newsworthy from a standpoint of um, the Army, the Navy, or the Marines? No. One down and nine to go, Jim Mitchell. Uh, I take it that in your normal uh, course of duty, you do not wear a uniform. Correct. Uh, therefore, we would uh, recognize you because of the fact that uh, you are generally newsworthy? I think that's a fair description, Jim, yeah. Uh, do you have a proficiency in the uh, manly performance of sports? No. 
Due out a date to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you ever do what you do in any kind of a vehicle? Well, now, do you mean specifically do what he does while in a vehicle? Or while getting out of it? While no. getting out no, of it. No, no, that's three dollars. No. <laughs> three dollars seven to go, Mr. Sir. As I understand it, we are now able to eliminate the world of sports and the world of entertainment. Is that correct? That, I think, is a good assumption. Yes. Uh, might your fame have uh, stemmed from some kind of political activity? No. Four down and six to go, Arlene Francis. You are not uh, a gentleman who recently was released from a balloon. No. <laughs> Five dollars, five to go, Jim. No, Mason. no, no, I got a yes. I, that was a... You are, that's right, you did. You've got a I yes. Did, Two I? negatives make an affirmative or something. Uh -huh. That's right. Um, have you done something that has to do with a non-profit making organization? Yes. Uh, the non-profit organization, however, has nothing to do with the defense or the armed services. Yes, it has no. not. No. Yes, it has not. No, yes. Yes, it has not. No, yes. Goody. Um, what has he done? Uh, do you have anything to do with public events? No. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But anyway. <laughs> five down and five to go, Jim Mitchell. I take it that I could not uh, probably do what you have done. Uh, considering uh, your equipment as we know it, we would have to guess that that is right, that you could not. Mm -hmm. uh, I take it that people do not pay to see you do what you have done. People do not pay to see you do what you have done. That is a correct assumption. Uh, you are not uh, involved in the world of business. No. Um, Nonprofit. That's a yes. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, yes. Uh, do you um, uh, get paid for what you have done? Yes. Uh, does the public pay you for this? Yes. Uh, they pay an admission? No. No. No, that's six down and four to go, and that is a question I wouldn't dwell on too much because it, it's uh, somewhat tenuous in, in the explanation of it. Ms. Kilgallen. Uh, is what you are famous for uh, a continuing thing rather than one specific event in your life? Yes. Uh, in other words, it is your particular fame in your particular profession that we're trying to guess. Yes. And you do not wear a uniform. No. Or any special garb. No. Well, now, just one, one, one small agreement here. I think that uh, you would agree that there are circumstances uh, under which we might describe you as wearing special garb, not ordinary um, street clothes. Right? All right. Yeah. Uh... Can you do your work uh, uh, both in the daytime and the nighttime? Yes. Do you address large numbers of people in the course of your work? Yes. Uh, are they better off because of what you tell them? Yes. Are you connected with any religious organization? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Are you at all connected with any of the arts? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Is there a degree uh, attached to your name? By that I mean, I, but could you be a doctor or a dentist or some such lawyer? Yes. Have you, in the course of your work, uh, helped peoples of other countries than your own? Yes. You're not going to believe this, but I bet I know who this is. Uh, are you a man that has worked, who has been here in America uh, in the hope of raising funds to continue his work on foreign soil? Yes. Are you a man by the name of Dr. Dooley? Yes. yes. <laughs> I have read about you, I have seen you appear, and I think that the work you do is 
wonderfully important, and I'm delighted that I'm the one that got you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. And I'd like to make that quite permanent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I might say this. Uh, speaking for the rest of the panel, may I say we're delighted, too? <laughs> <laughs> I might say this of, of Dr. Tom. I had the great honor of working with him in a documentary. I became very familiar with his work in Laos and earlier in Vietnam. But I think it's a story the American people have come progressively to know more about. His personal story is, I think, as exciting and as splendid as his professional story, because he was out in Wang Sing in northern Laos, 16 miles from the Chinese border, where they are currently having, as you know, uh, aggressions out of uh, northern Viet Minh into his old area. And he came up with a little thing called a melanoma, a cancer in the chest, malignant melanoma. He came home, had an operation, He's been very busy raising money to go back to Laos. And if you ask Dr. Tom how he's going to make out with his cancer operation, he says if he can get through the New York traffic, okay, he's got a 50-50 chance. I'm going back in three weeks. I'm going back to Laos. You're going back to Laos in to three rest. weeks. Tom, I've got uh, a little surprise here that I hope pleasures you mightily. I serve with much pleasure as a member of the Damon Runyon Fund. And here's a check for $5,000 made out to Medico Incorporated. Thank you very much. Now, I will say this. I think you all know the fund. It's administered and gloriously by uh, Dan Parker of the Mirror, and Arthur Godfrey, uh, Mr. Winchell, Walter Winchell. It's given away something in excess of $13 million in grants since it was founded, but I don't think that any grant ever made has given as much pleasure as this one that goes to Dr. Tom Dooley tonight. Tom, anything else we can do to help you? Yes. Everybody listening can uh, help it just like the Damon Runyon Fund did, and I just happen to have a few seconds that I'm allowed to give my address. If anybody listening, or if Ms. Francis, Mr. Mitchell, or Ms. Kilgallen, and Mr. Cerf, who is not my publisher, would like to help. Our address is simply Medico, Box 2, Times Square, New York. I repeat, Medico, Box <laughs> 2, Times Square, New York. And thank you, Ms. Francis, and thank you. Tom, it's wonderful to have you. Tom is so determined to make Medico economically viable that those of us who know him well have come, got, come to call him Box 2 now. We don't call him Dr. Dooley anymore. <laughs> All right, panel, let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Would you come in and sign in, please? Diana Tessier or Tesla? <laughs> Miss or Mrs.? Miss Tesla. Miss Tesla? Tesla. And where are you from? New York City. New York City. Miss Tesla, may I present the panel? Panel, Miss Tesla, you. would you join me over here, please? And do you know how we keep score? Yes, I do. All right, Miss Tesla, in that event, we'll let the audience here in the theater and the folks at home know exactly what your line is. Tell you that Miss Tesla is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Sir. Miss Tesla, do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes, I do. Is there a product involved in what you do? Definitely. Is this a product that is made? Yes, it is. Uh, is it a product that is consumed in any way? That is either wear out or or consumed within. Oh yes, it is. Well, now, may I guess, is it, cons is it uh, worn outside and not eaten or drunk? Yes, it is. Is it, uh, would it be listed under apparel? Mm. No, not exactly. Not no, exactly. that's one out of nine to go, Miss Francis. But is it, Miss Tesla, something that is uh, worn on the person? Yes, it is worn. Uh, is it, um, is it something that 
might be on from the waist up. Yes, yes. What about, how far can we go from the neck up? Um, yes. Something that might be seen by the naked, if I may use the expression, eye? <laughs> At times, yes. Family program, Miss Francis. <laughs> <clears throat> is it something that uh, is in the vicinity of the face? Yes, it is in the vicinity of the face. Is it something that might be on top of the head? Yes. Is it something that might get in the way or cover up or have something to do with the hairline? Very definitely. Is it made of hair or hemp? <laughs> <laughs> yes? yes? Do you have anything to do with wigs or toupees? I certainly do. <laughs> But what does Miss Tesler have to do with wigs and toupees? Well, one thing is sure, she hasn't got one on herself. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. Do, you, uh, do you make them? Right. That does it. <laughs> and you know, it's very funny you should hit hairlines because I believe Miss Tesler's company is Hairline Incorporated, Incorporated. isn't it? <laughs> Hairline Incorporated. I was dying to have Bennett Sorry. ask that question. Is this a product I could use? You know, I'd have is this one? Up. Is this one? I'm going to dying to have you say, is this a product I could use? And I'd have had hysterics all over the state. <laughs> well, thank well, you look. very much, Miss Tesla. I'm sorry we didn't uh, give the panel more puzzle, but it was a very interesting no, line of questioning. Uh, Arlene answer. gets one more thing tonight. She'll be in Washington tomorrow at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Nice to have you in much my life. You say good night to the panel. And now we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our spot. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel must once again blown, blind, blur, uh, cover their eyes. <coughs> uh, are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Well, that applause indica indicated that you were a gorgeous beauty, are you? <laughs> <laughs> one down and nine to go, Mr. Okay. Third. <laughs> Uh, I take it from that raucous laughter that you are the male persuasion. <laughs> Is that correct? Uh, yes, I think so. Miss Francis? <laughs> are you an actor in pictures? Oh, that's uh, what uh, uh, income tax blanks say. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell? What is that, that, a yes or a no? The, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anything that has to do with the income tax is yes. <laughs> Do you have a picture that's currently playing in New York? No. No, I don't think so. Two down, eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Have I seen you in the flesh within the last week? Oh, uh, uh, I don't know where you are at. <laughs> well, that may be said of everybody on this show at one time or another. Uh, I think, Dorothy, since there is a basic area of indecision here, I'll give you a no. Well, uh, I will. Uh, it's not the person I thought, because I think that uh, if he had seen me, or if I'd seen him, he would he have known it. So it's, it's a no. All right, that's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, besides yourself, is there any other member of your family who is well known in the entertainment business? No. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Do you appear on television? Uh, yes. Mr. Michener, uh, are you well known as a singer? <laughs> no. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. 
Now, our guest has said, just for purposes of clarification, John, that he is not in a current picture. He is not currently, uh, not in a picture currently being seen on Broadway in the main picture houses in New York. Are you a leading man type primarily? Uh, no. <laughs> Six out of four to go, Mr. Sir. You're not? I do usually play reasonably elderly roles. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Miss Francis? Are you a character man in a television serial? Oh, uh, what's that? Yeah. What? Mr. Mitchner? I don't know what the answer was. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Uh, does this cereal have a lot of horses in it? Uh, no, 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 no. Seven down, three to go, Miss Kilgallen. They all do. Good night. Well, now this, you know, there's a horse in everything these days. <laughs> do you wear a beard in real life? Oh, no. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, in the programs that you play in, in television, is there any music in the programs? Oh, no. Nine down, one to go, Miss Francis. We're almost finished. Get it, Arlene. Uh, I can't. Uh, are you in a, uh, in a family series? Oh, uh, yes. I wish you hadn't said yes. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell? Uh, family series. In a family series, uh, one of the Nelsons. <laughs> Did you say Ricky Nelson, Jim Mitchner? Is that what you meant? I said one of the Nelsons. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> that makes it <laughs> ten down and no more to go. And uh, Mr. Walter Brennan would be very happy to have oh, you all remove your, oh. your mask. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I was a lady on this show, I had a woman's voice. <laughs> you know, really, Jim, Walter came here with the best Chinese accent we've had on What's My Line in nine and a half years, just for you. I thought Not he the was Chinese, Mr. Japanese, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, Japanese. Oh, oh, oh for Japanese. Well, he Honolulu, 1952. Honolulu, big time. I met you in Honolulu in 1952. Good time we had out there. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you remember, Jim? <laughs> I you do think now. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell, do you think it's fair to lay such enigmatic remarks as big time we had out there? Just <laughs> let it be. <there. laughs> hey? So uh, we sat along the beach with our feet higher than our heads for about three days, and I reviewed almost all the parts Mr. Brennan had been in, one of my favorite actors, and he astonished me by telling me about the parts he hadn't been in and how <laughs> tough it was to lose them. Well, well the family series, I, by the way, I don't think it needs identification because it's, uh, and I bet it makes you pleasant, pleasant, pleasantly happy because it's one of the most popular shows in television, The Real McCoys. Here is Mr. Yes. McCoy. It's a great, great scene that I remember about. He tells, says to a cop, I got a license from somewhere yeah, else. He's in Virginia. California. Yeah. I got my West Virginia license. What do you need else? You see one of them, you see them all. You see one of them, you see them all. Yes, Dorothy? Uh, wish to say, Japanese accent, so good. American woman panelist thought he read buttons. Thought I want to please? Uh, <laughs> said she thought, thought you'd lost your button. Oh, I thought you'd lost your button. What? I thought you were saying, I thought she was a river butter. <laughs> <laughs> Walter, thank you very thank much you, for Mr. joining us. It's awfully good to have it's you with us again. It's always nice to see you see again, you. Mr. Daly. Thank, thank you very much. Will you say goodnight to Paul? We will be back after this word from our sponsor. Francis is going to take next Sunday off because she's got to write a book, so I'll say good night, Miss Francis, and be back soon. Thank you, John. Sayonara, Mr. Richner. <laughs> <laughs> or aloha, I should say, now that you're a native of Hawaii. Good, good night, Dorothy. Good night, Jim. It was lovely having you and Arlene. Please don't go. We need you desperately. <laughs> good go night, Bennett. Isn't it funny? Everybody's writing books these days. Thank the Lord, Jim Mitchner's one of them. When are you going to wear one, John? You've never asked me, Bennett. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by United Airlines. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totman. This is Hal Sims speaking. <laughs>